Welcome back to our coverage of the United Nations Climate Change Conference from Tianjin, China. Um, I'm delighted to say we've been joined by Tom Wang from Greenpeace China, um, and you've got a lot of expertise when it comes to uh, the, the response within China to the uh, climate change crisis. But I think, Tom, I'd actually like to start and uh, ask you about some of your personal experiences, because I know that you know, you've, you've experienced many of the impacts of climate change first time, uh, firsthand and also, also the impacts of... Uh, um, of uh, dirty fossil fuels. So perhaps you could perhaps you could uh, share those with our viewers to begin with. Sure. Uh, starting from like the late seventies, when I was a little kid, in this uh, small village uh, in Shanxi Province, which is quite famous in China um, because it produces one third of coal for China. And then when I was turning like seven or eight years old, all of a sudden. Uh, this kind of like coal mining or industries just started to you know like boom in in my hometown and then I started to see you know like more and more uh, coal miners you know like more and more people hired by coal mines and also more and more coal trucks and uh, coking factories so it was just a quite quite sad really to see how my hometown where I could really go to the river to swim and then the river would get dry you know pretty soon and then you know like in the small town uh, it was just a totally full of uh, coal trucks running around you know like making the whole thing I mean all the hills and also all the water uh, black and then you know the river would dry or the river dried um, I think when I turned about 10 years old and then um, quite interestingly it stayed dry for many years and then this year just two weeks ago there was a flood and it happened my sister's stationery shop was uh, quite close to the river and then you know it just uh, overflowed and then got into her shop so it just ruined some of her stuff like computers and also photocopy machines so it's just a quite a drama really I mean to 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 uh, experience that kind of pollution and then experience how this dirty fossil fuel is killing that little town you know not not just by polluting it but also by you know like causing climate change or you know like extreme uh, weather events like floods We're contributing to, to a bigger problem right so you have, it's a, a vivid uh, description of the, the impacts of, of reliance on, on fossil fuels and, and also um, some of the potential consequences of climate change. How is the Chinese government responding uh, to, to these challenges? Well, we have been working quite actively to uh, make, first of all, coal more expensive because, you know, like the heavy reliance on coal in China is simply because coal is considered as really cheap. Um, and that hasn't happened yet. So I'm, I'm totally looking forward to, you know, like seeing that one day coal will be made extremely expensive. Basically, nobody could really afford that. And so that, you know, like we could get the wind power, solar power more competitive, you know, and then hopefully one day just take over the market. And I, I mean, I have to say China has been encouraging a lot of the uh, renewable energy industries as well. And we can see nowadays China is pretty much the largest, uh, or at least one of the largest users of renewable energies. And also at the same time, you know, like the biggest uh, producer of renewable energy facilities or equipment. Um, but, you know, like the thing is climate change doesn't wait for us. You know, it's happening so fast and China has to move way faster than that. You mentioned there that you, you feel that coal needs to be made more expensive, right. and I, I guess maybe that would involve taking into account the pollution that it causes, um, in, you know, in, right. in the costing of it. But isn't one of the dilemmas here that actually coal is fundamental to China's development? You know, people need access to electricity, and, and coal is providing that, and, and it's it's cheap and it's allowing you know millions of people to be lifted out of poverty. If, if coal is made expensive, you know, are we not risking horrendous social consequences across China anyway, regardless of climate change? Well, the first thing is, I mean, like if we're uh, taking into consideration of the external costs of coal. We did a calculation uh, in 2008. Basically, in that year, the external cost, including, for example, infrastructure, uh, infrastructure destruct, uh, destruction, and also house collapsing, people's health, coal miners being killed, air being polluted, you know, like people's health and everything, uh, that 
in that year by using so much coal, China pretty much would have to pay 7% of its GDP just on coal. And then secondly, talking about poverty elevation. I mean, like again, getting back to my hometown, it is beautiful. It is. It has, you know, like more than like 3,000 years of history. We have all these tourist, you know, attractions there. For example, there is a little pagoda that dates back to, you know, like Tang Dynasty more than 2,000 years ago. And the sad thing is, local people could develop tourist industry, but this pagoda now is being uh, ruined because, you know, like it's on top of a hill and there is a coal mine right underneath the hill. And with the coal being mined, you know, day after day, month after month, year after year, the hill is sinking and the pagoda is leaning to one side and one day sooner or later it's just going to collapse completely so i mean like there are so many ways you know like we could develop agriculture we could develop tourist industry i mean there are a lot of ways to do poverty elevation but i mean if you rely so heavily on coal basically we're just uh, following this stupid vicious circle you know like we will never be able to get out of that so I, I, I really don't really buy that kind of argument that, you know, like coal is one way to get people out of poverty. And at the same time, uh, if we look at, for example, uh, Yunnan province, where the worst drought happened earlier this year, the drought lasted for eight months and one out of four people couldn't get drinking water, you know, by the end of it. And these people are the poorest people and they are not really emitting any CO2. At the same time, they are suffering from it. So, you know, like, you, you cannot just to say, okay, we will hire a lot of coal miners. We will, you know, like, use coal to, uh, burn coal to generate electricity and then, you know, like, get people out of poverty. That doesn't really make sense at all. So if, if climate change is, is the problem, uh, you know, is, is, is this huge problem, the government is, is responding to it, uh, and as, as you say, you've, you've seen the effects firsthand. Is that kind of, is that the case for the rest of civil society? Is there a, a big movement here to, to uh, you know, solve climate change? Is there a lot of uh, activism? Mm. Uh, we had a press conference this morning uh, with uh, almost 60 local NGOs uh, to release a joint position paper basically we're just calling all governments to work together you know like now uh, we have you know mobilized thousands of people alone you know like just in a couple of days to put their pictures together to show that you know i'm willing to uh, make a change of my life you know to start a low carbon lifestyle why can't you you know like i'm willing to act on climate will you so that you know we will send all these messages to the negotiators here. But before that, I mean, for many years, Chinese NGOs have, have already been working quite actively on uh, public awareness building and public engagement and also policy changing or pushing for policy ch change in, in China. For example, uh, one of the best cases is uh, this NGO called Friends of uh, Nature. They um, had this pilot project <coughs> by measuring how much electricity uh, 200 families were using. So they would walk into each one of these 200 families and then uh, calculate uh, by <coughs> the kind of like electric uh, appliances in these families and then do one month, you know, like pro for example, this family will have to pay 100 yuan RMB for electricity by running all these appliances. And then they will say, look, if you shift to you know, more energy efficient electric uh, appliances, you could save about you know, like one third of that electric bill. So that's a really good case because you know, like once we finish that kind of calculation, uh, it can be copied by basically any family. And at the same time, it's, that's, that's the, the interesting thing. The Chinese government at, at the moment is actually encouraging people to recycle their old home appliances. So if you have a, you know, like 20 year old, really energy consuming uh, fridge, you can take it back to the market and then the company will, you know, give you a huge discount for a more energy efficient one.